All right. We're going to turn in our Bibles. Lord laid on my heart because uh, I think the church needs to be awakened to a fact that there is a there is not just coming it's here because we read about this not in our news I'm gonna smile all the way through this so you know that you know I'm not gonna try to be horribly serious if you get the publication voice of the martyrs then you know all about the persecution of Christians that are around the world well, what in this light, in this time, as such a time as this, what is our position? Where should we be? Church doesn't talk a lot about this. And I just felt the Holy Spirit gently, gently saying, this is where we are, this is where my church is, and I want them to be prepared. How many knows Jesus loves his church so much that he wants to be prepared for the coming days. Amen. Turn, if you will, in your Bibles to John chapter 11. Thank you, Jesus. And when you have found that portion of Scripture in John chapter 11, please stand with me in honor of God's Word. And I know it is well, it's getting there. Pastor, what's happening? You know there's a lot that's going to be happening in the coming days. You already know what's happening. And we need to be ready. Don't let this be as a surprise. Because Jesus is never surprised. John chapter 11. I'm reading verses 1 through 10. I'm reading. You can read it in your Bibles. I'm reading from uh, the Amplified. I like how it reads. Now a certain main man named Lazarus was sick. And he was from Bethany, the village where Mary and her sister Martha lived. And it was the Mary who anointed the Lord with perfume and wiped his hair with, uh, wiped his feet with her hair, whose brother Lazarus was sick. So the sisters sent word to him, saying, Lord, he, uh, our brother and your friend, whom you love, is sick. And when Jesus heard this, he said, this sickness will not end in death, but on the contrary, it is for the glory and honor of God. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. So that the Son of God may be glorified by it. Now Jesus loved and was concerned about Martha and her sister and Lazarus and considered them dear friends. So even when he heard that Lazarus was sick, he stayed in the same place two more days. Then he said to his disciples, Let us go back to Judea. The disciples said to him, Rabbi or teacher, the Jews were only recently going to stone you, and you are thinking of going back there again? And here it is, folks, Jesus' answer. Are there not 12 hours of daylight in a day when men can work. Anyone who walks in the daytime does not stumble because he sees by the light of this world. But if anyone walks in the night, he stumbles because there is no light in him. Heavenly Father, this is your word. May you hide me behind it. And may I be hid behind your cross. The words speaking are your words to your church, your bride that is awaiting your coming. And Lord, may we find your words to be settled in our heart and center us around 
your gospel, your truth, that in the coming days when we hear about such things, we will not be moved. Amen. Help us, Lord. Help us, Lord. We thank you and praise you. And everyone said, Amen. Amen. My text is, you may be seated, my text is found in John, uh, John 11, 9. Jesus answered, are there not 12 hours of daylight in the day? Anyone who walks in the daytime does not stumble because he sees by the light of this world, but he also sees by the light of God's truth. Somebody say amen. God's truth. Everybody, stand, everybody say with me that you, you, you want, I want God's truth. I want God's truth. It comes through his light. That is the light of the gospel. Jesus on the, uh, on the Sermon on the Mount, Matthew 5, 10 through 12. I'll wait for that. Blessed, and the Amplified says it this way, blessed or comforted by inner peace and God's love are those who are persecuted for doing that which is morally right, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven both now and forever. Amen? Amen. Blessed, morally courageous, and spiritually alive uh, with life joy in God's goodness are you when people insult you and persecute you, you and falsely say all kinds of evil things against you because of your association with me. Jesus goes on to say, Be glad and exceedingly joyful, for your reward in heaven is great, absolutely inexhaustible. For in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. Now I did bring the 18, early 1880s. Salvation Army came to the shores of Great Britain. They were not always welcome. In fact, when those brave soldiers of Christ, of the Salvation Army, marched down the streets of London, they were catcalled. They were persecuted unmercifully their rocks were thrown at them and other things that it was not nice but they kept doing it and they used Christ principle found in Matthew 5 44 through 45 Matthew 5:44 through 45. Philip Okay, Philip, yeah. Oh yeah? What version? Okay. <laughs> All right. My, my version says Matthew 5, 44 through 45, but I say to you, love. Wow. Maybe it's um, Matthew 6. Hmm. Well, I don't know. Maybe, maybe my... What do you think is like Maybe your Bible is like I don't know, but my mind says Matthew 5, 44 through 45, but I say unto you, love... That is, unselfishly, seek the best and higher good for your enemies. Does yours read like that? Yeah. Uh, your enemies and pray for those and seek the higher good for those who persecute you. So that you may show yourselves to be 
the children of your Father who is in heaven, for he makes his son to rise on those who are evil and those who are good. He makes the rain to fall on the righteous, those who are morally upright, and the unrighteous, the unrepentant, those who oppose him. The Salvation Army embraced these verses and would not retaliate, would not even complain. Today the Salvation Army is what it is, a giant organization, and people, homeless people, flock to their doors for food, for nourishment, for shelter, and for clothing, necessary clothing, all because they followed the Lord's practice. Pastor, what are you saying? I am seeing. Because if it's going to happen to this old boy, it's going to happen. Maybe not to you on the other level, but there is out there a dynamic that Satan does not want. So that is why I say, pray for your pastor his protection for his safety for all of us pray for every single one of us who go out on the streets Scott Sue you know about this Taylor Lisa you know about this my wife does I do we go out on the streets during street light ministry and you know sometimes I'm standing in that line just making sure everything's copacetic, you know. Everything's going, nobody's trying to cut, you know, in front of everybody else because there are people who try to do that. And that gets people upset. But I've run into, and I, this was a, some experience that I, I didn't see coming, you know. I just couldn't see. One gentleman came up to me and said, it doesn't say in the cross. It doesn't say in the Bible that Jesus died on a cross. Well, he's right in a little ways, but he needs to read his scripture. But he wouldn't let it go. I could see where he's coming, and, I, and, and the Holy Spirit tapped me on the shoulder and said, you know, this guy is coming from a branch of religion that's out there that wants to just confront and nitpick. And you're going to find people like that if it's in my own family. Amen. If it's happening on my level, it's going to happen throughout. I have a sister who won't even talk to me. She won't. She got upset with me over something I posted on Facebook. Was it a bad thing? No. I didn't think so. This weekend was interesting. I have a niece who is a senior in high school. She's gay. Yes, she needs prayer. But she was upset because I posted another posting there was an article. Praise God for his intervention. In that, parents kept their, kept their children from school because they did not agree with the school's mandate, mandate, if you will, of LGB, LGBTQTRS, XYZ. I'm sorry, I'm just, you know... Lessons being taught in that public school district. And 85% of the parents said, no, we're keeping our kids home from school. I applaud that. And all I said was, if England has that kind of freedom, we should have, we certainly should have that kind of freedom, and the parents should have the freedom to manage, manage, their child's education. Everybody said amen. You can clap if you want to. Oh, amen. Praise God. She got upset with that. The school stopped. The school was forced 
to stop those lessons. Hallelujah. Praise God. So I had to deal with that. Finally had to shut the conversation down myself. You know, some things have to take a stand. And Jesus said, the day is far spent. I don't know how much daylight there is saying, okay, there's, there's, there's only so much time left. We're going to be out of here. We're going home. How many of you are ready for that? Praise the Lord. Okay, until that time, it's time to keep working. Because Jesus said there are only so many hours in day of daylight that you have and you can't work when it's dark. We need to be ready to go, but we need to be ready as the darkness is coming on. Pray for those which persecute you. Because Jesus said in John 15, 20, hallelujah, John 15, 20, and 21. Remember and continue to remember that I told you a servant is not greater than his master. If they persecuted me, they will also persecute you. If they keep my word, they will also keep yours. But they will do all these hurtful things to you for my name's sake thinking that they are doing the good thing because you bear my name and are identified with me for they do not know the one who sent me Jesus is saying if they did it to me they're gonna do it to you because they're in darkness in John chapter 3 we read and I believe if you were here this morning, we read. There are people who walk in the darkness because they like to be in the darkness because their deeds are evil and they know that they're evil and they do not want to be exposed. Satan is always angry when his deeds, when his works are exposed. We love to live in the light because the way that we were, we were a mess. Face it. Admit it. I was a mess. I needed a change. I needed an intervention. I needed an interventionist in my life and he was Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And turn my life around where I couldn't turn it around. I couldn't turn it around. But I will tell you the truth on that day when he became my Savior and Lord something happened to me something happened to me that I cannot explain and you can say the same thing too something happened to me I can't explain it but Jesus turned the light on and now I can see it's not to as God's Word says, condemn the world. John 3, 17, He did not come into the world to condemn that the world, but that the world through Him might be saved. Somehow in our Western society, we've given everybody their rights and their freedom, and it isn't morally wrong it isn't morally wrong anymore to be gay. I'm sorry. I'm glad for those who stand up and say, I'm sorry. Here's the thing. When Jesus looked at Nicodemus, when he looked at At that little guy that was up the tree, not Nicodemus, but Zacchaeus, 
And even when he looked at Nicodemus, he didn't condemn the man for his questions. He came along the road to Jericho, and there was Nicodemus up a tree. Come on down here, <coughs> Nicodemus. I know who you are. Oh, aren't you glad God knows your address? Aren't you know, glad God knows your name? God, aren't you glad that God knows everything about you? No, I don't want him to know all the bad things. You know, oh, Lord. No, it's a good thing. I think we need to wrap our minds around the truth is that even though God knows the bad things about us spiritually, He has a remedy. He has an inoculation. He knows how to administer the right kind of spiritual medication to set us free from darkness unto light. Amen? And so what did he do? He said, Zacchaeus, come on down from that tree. I'm going to have supper with you. He knew all about Zacchaeus. That he was naughty. That he was a cheater. He cheated people out of their, on their taxes. What did he do? People knew how much taxes that they, knew, that they had to give. Zacchaeus would come on the scene and say, Oh, oh, by the way, you, 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 owe, uh, you owe about 10% uh, more. What are you talking about? Oh, the interest rate just went up. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. But what was, what was the average taxpayer going to say to such a man was that when he has a Roman guard beside him? You know, pay the money. Jesus knew all about that. Jesus knew all about that. Yet he came to Zacchaeus and said, I'm going to have supper with you. Notice, Jesus never said one word about Zacchaeus' sin. He sat down, had supper with the man, and then the man, under the simple, holy conviction of the Holy Spirit, mm -hmm, said, look, look, Lord, called him Lord, called him Lord, look, Lord, uh, um, Everything that I've cheated everybody out of, I repay fourfold. Jesus, Jesus didn't make him say that or do that, did he? All Jesus said to Zacchaeus was simply come down from the tree and I'm going to have a meal with you. You see... Sometimes we get so thinking in our mind about justice that we need to confront an issue head on. You know, you know, like this kind of a thing. No, 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 no. Just be a friend. The end of my conversation with my niece on Facebook was simply this. I love you. I want you to know I love you. And my wish for you is that you, I wish for you success, I wish for you peace, and I wish for you the best of everything. Blessings on you. You see, to confront the issue, you don't have to confront the issue. All you have to do is say, Jesus loves you. You don't even have to talk about gay lifestyle. You don't have to talk about anything because Jesus never, never touched about the person. It was always about their problem, their issue, their whatever it is. And he knew right where the problem was. So what was Zacchaeus' problem? It was greed. Plain and simple. Greed. Gotta have it, gotta have it, gotta have it. Gotta have that designer basketball, whatever it is. <laughs> I pick on him. 
He knows I love him. The issue in the world today, on the world scene, is sometimes one that is not pretty. We have a family here. There was a war. That war was started between two factions. One Christian, one non-Christian. They're in the Congo. This is why we have a family sitting in our midst today. Thank God for them. Thank God for... Amen? <laughs> Amen. And we love them. We love Wamini and her family. They're part of us. And the issue is always this. When we see one that is hurting in the family of God, we rush over to them immediately and give them encouragement and grace, and we show the love of God. But what about those bad guys? Oh, they're bad guys. Jesus said, pray for them. Jesus said right there in Scripture, pray for them who persecute you even if they unfriend you on Facebook. Ah. Ah. Lord, help us. Guess what, guys? I've got a friend in Jesus. And you ain't never had a friend like him. Just to quote, you know, just to quote Aladdin, you know. You ain't never had a friend like him. And he's no genie in the bottle, I, I will assure you. Give you three wishes. He's here to set you free. He's here to give people hope. And if we can keep focused, keep focused, really folks, keep focused, not so much on the sin problem, the, the sin, but the person that needs something, there is a deep set need. I don't know what that is. Maybe you don't know what that is. I have family members that struggle with depression. There's a thing that they need help in. People who walk in darkness often battle depression. Amen. And they're trying to find an answer in drugs, in pot, in dope, in alcohol, in pornography, in whatever, gaming. Oh my goodness, that's, wow. That's getting to be something. Online gaming. Woo. Help us, Lord. There are no get-rich schemes. Jesus is Lord. Persecution should not move us from the centricity of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Let me say that again. Persecution in whatever form, low, high, however way it comes. And it's coming. All right? It's, it's coming. Jesus said, before I come, there is going to be a great divide in families, in homes. And Jesus said, I am the truth and the life and nobody comes by me, ex nobody comes to God except the Father, except through me. I'm going to close with this. This is one of my most favorite scriptures. I used it as my senior theme. Hello. <laughs> I just love technology. Yes, you can quote me on that, and it can be recorded. Acts 20, 24, Paul says this. Acts 20, 24. Thank you. But none of these things move me, nor do I count my life dear to myself that I may finish my race with joy and the ministry to testify to the gospel of grace 
of the grace of God. The Amplified Version reads, which I receive from the Lord, that I may finish my course and the ministry which I receive from the Lord Jesus to testify faithfully of the good news of God's precious, undeserved grace, which makes us free of the guilt of sin and grants us eternal life. None of these things move me. They do not move me from the centricity of where Christ is within me. Hallelujah. Somebody say pra praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. We have a firm foundation. We are established. We are planted. We are firmly put where Christ has us and every single one of us. I, I, I thank God for this every day. Every single one of us has a ministry. It's not the guy up here or the lady up here. It's what you do every single day. Hallelujah. Every single day for who, whoever it is. Somebody walks up to you and says, well, as you're ministering to them on the street, Taylor, well, I'm gay. Well, isn't that nice? Isn't that nice? I'm Carl. How you doing? <laughs> you know, turn it around. Are you hungry? Here, here's a candy bar. Here's a trail, you know, trail bar. Are you cold? Do you need a blanket? I can take you to where they have coats and socks and boots and jackets. From now until, when, when is it, uh, Scott? From now until what, May, April, May? Streetlight has coats, blankets, clothing, socks, boots, mittens, gloves, hats, scarves, whatever you want. And, and we know if someone is hurting, no matter what they, what they are, it's not about the sin. Because the sin problem, I want to tell you this, the sin problem has already been remedied. There is a remedy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's just some people get the idea that we walk around with a holiness you know, thing over our head, meaning we're perfect. No, I'm not perfect. I don't espouse, I do not <laughs> pretend to be. I do not say that I am. Because there's only one perfect, and that is Jesus, and he lives in me. Hallelujah! And you can have him too. Amen. You can have him too. But are you cold? Do you need a drink of water? The Bible says, if you give anyone a drink of cold water in my name, you will receive a reward. Hallelujah. I want my people, I want, I want to pray. These folks that go on the street and work on the street and work in street light, I would like them to come up. I want, the, I want the church to get behind them. You know, this is the one thing. When I was thinking about three years ago coming, where are we going to go to church? Where we want to go to church? Well, I want to go to a church where there's some dynamic of reaching out into the community. This church does that. So I'm not calling on people to, you know, you know put spotlight on them. But I, I, you know, Taylor, Lisa, will, will you please, we're going to pray for you. Darcy is out there on the street too. Will you come up, honey? Scott and Sue, you work there. I want our pastor, Pastor Paul, come. You come too. 
I want the church to come. I want, I want the church to come. Anybody who wants to come and pray for these folks because these folks are on the front line. Hallelujah. They are. They're on the front line of where people have lost hope. And that's the reason there is such anger in our society today because people have lost hope. Doesn't mean they can't find it again. They've just lost it. They've just lost it. And they need someone to come under a bridge. Amen. In a park. Degage. Wherever they are at, at, at Guiding Light. Mel Trotter. And say, so, you know, I don't know what, it, what you need specifically, but I know I've got what you need, and his name is Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Can we gather around these folks? Hallelujah. And pray for them. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And find someone to pray with. Just find someone to pray with. Yes, Pastor. Pastor Carl, you come. Hallelujah, Jesus. Let's all pray. Hallelujah. Yes, thank you. Father, we thank you for Paul and his work, and he does wherever it is. I know there's people. You bring in contact with him. You have the words for him to say. Thank you, Jesus. And he has a wonderful story to tell and share of how he once was lost. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. But now he's found. Hallelujah. He was blind and now he sees. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And we can tell that story to others who desperately, desperately, desperately need to hear it. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Scott as well as the he works there, God. A lot of use times, them, God, use them. They, they, they come up with the craziest things and hallelujah, I don't even know how to even talk to them, God, but God, you know how to give us the words. Yes. Yes. The anoint us. Anoint, anoint us, Lord God, these people that are on the street. Sue and Scott are on the street and they run into people all the time. Lord, they are instruments. Give us appointments, Lord. Give us appointments. Appointments. Um, Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Father, I pray for all of us, whether we're on the streets of Grand Rapids or wherever it is, where maybe we're in a store, maybe we're in the school, maybe we're we're maybe we're at work somewhere, and and there's just that somebody that needs to hear Jesus is exactly what you need. Help us, Lord, to be attentive to your word, attentive to your voice, and simply show the love of God as you did to Zacchaeus. You want us to do uh, to this lost and dying world that are in darkness and they need to see your light. They just need to be washed in your blood once again and be set free. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. We pray, oh God. We pray, oh God, for everyone. Let us go forward in the name of Jesus, proclaiming his love and his glory. Help us, O oh Lord, as those divine appointments come up. You give us the words to say, whether it's our neighbor, whether it's the person in the cashier that's across, just across the way in the cashier, you know, doing her job, doing his job. Father, Wherever it is, whatever the situation is, you give us those appointments for good reason so that the word of God can go forward and they can experience your love. Maybe for the first time in their life. We don't know. But Lord, we have a story to tell that once I was blind and now I see and you can have it too. We're not brainwashed. We are heart washed. Amen. We are heart washed in you because you set us free. Hallelujah, hallelujah. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. God bless you. The Lord be with you and multiply everything that comes in your way. You are blessed 
and you are uh, anointed in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank you.